Hey everybody, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. I had a really good question this week from Dave in the UK. After I finish editing my images in Lightroom, I export them to JPEGs. I then further edit my files, clone stamp for example in CS5. What is the best way to watermark in this situation? My images are not complete until after the Photoshop phases. Well, you got a couple things going on there. And um, first thing I would do is you should be editing in a Photoshop document, not in a JPEG. Because every time you do save a JPEG, although it's going to be very minuscule, you will have more loss because it recompresses the file every single time and it reruns that algorithm. So in order to get the 100% quality and no loss, especially when resaving the file, you definitely want to be using a PSD file or a TIFF file to edit. The PSD is preferred because you don't, you're not going to have some really you're have minimal size files, and um, you don't have any issues with the TIFF file. So you're you're much better off with the PSD, at least in um, the way that I work, especially if you're staying within the Adobe uh, family of products. So how do we do it? What are we doing with with those files well let's do it right here for you all right first I have this file I took this out in Las Vegas last year great picture absolutely love it but it needs some editing I got this big shadow right here from the bridge and it has to go I know that I can edit it out and I know that I can fix it but it's just gonna take a little bit of work in order to do that and obviously I'm not gonna be able to do it from within Lightroom at least not completely so here's my first picture, completely unedited. We have this picture completely ready to go. Next one right here is just the editing that I did with did within Lightroom. Okay, um, as you see, I have the main adjustments made. I have my saturation. Uh, I think I might have darkened the sky. Uh, typically, I'd also do some spotting, as you can see up here in the sky area. I didn't clean my sensor, uh, and I needed to. But anyway, that should be it can be spotted out in Lightroom 2, um, or I should say Lightroom 3. But um, anyway, I didn't do that in this particular file because I knew I was going to take it into Photoshop. So, the file is ready to go. A couple things we can do. Well, number one, we can make a an export setting, okay, an export preset. Now, there's two of them here that I use. Um, this four, or actually three, uh, I have here. Uh, the 4,000 pixel 8-bit PSD, I have a 4,000 pixel 16-bit PSD, and I have a 5,000 pixel 16-bit PSD. Now, the 5,000 pixel one, uh, I'll use if I just want to upraise the file a little bit, if I know that I'm going to need a little bit more pixels, but most of the time, I'm only going to use the uh, 4,000 pixel, 16 or 8 bit really depends on what I'm doing. If I'm going to do a lot of heavy, heavy editing, like I would be with this picture, I will definitely be using the 16 bit, just so that I make sure that I have as much data as possible to work with. Uh, then I have start with this huge 55 gallon drum of data, and then I pour just what I need into that JPEG file, and it's completely filled to the brim. Rather than just starting with that little gallon that fills the JPEG, and then you know, we start throwing stuff away, and it's all and it's gone. So think of it that way. All right. So set my preset, and then um, export to same folder as original photo format PSD color space. Definitely in Pro Photo. That's the way I like. I prefer to edit in Pro Photo RGB. It's the largest color space, and you're gonna have the most data. Same with 16 bit. Um, I don't know why that's still checked. It shouldn't be resize. That's again my preference is to resize it as that. You can turn off resize if you want. At this step, you don't want to sharpen. All right, you want to sharpen uh, when you're when you're all the way done. The final file is where you want to sharpen. All right, and you shouldn't need a watermark. And then, if you want, you can choose to edit it in a, in CS3. Okay, and uh, back up to the top here, you probably want to add it to the catalog because it's going to. You want to keep this file for prosperity. This is going to be your uh, the, you're no longer editing from the original raw file. You're now editing from that PSD file, and you're exporting from that PSD. So you want to keep that. All right. So you're going to export it. I'm not going to because I already have a copy of it right here, and it's already been edited. 
and you see that corner it looks pretty darn good probably could use a little bit more touch up but it looks pretty darn good so I now have my original file and I just made this copy uh, just so that you could see the difference in between the, the original or kind of the steps between the original and the edited so then I have that PSD file it's completely edited it's ready to go okay and then I also have this is just a virtual copy within Lightroom that makes this black and white version okay it's actually just a duplicate virtual copy of this PSD there really isn't any other changes but the cool thing about it is is that these black and white changes say I, I would go back and I would edit this PSD file okay this black and white is going to automatically show or reflect those changes that I made to this PSD file so if I would go back and I would re-edit this corner a little bit to fix it up especially this line right here I'd fix that up a little bit okay that's automatically gonna be reflected in this black and white file exactly what we want alright so let's export this picture this is your final step let's review real quick before we export we've imported it okay we've made changes into the second file here in Lightroom okay just to the NEF file then we've exported a PSD file edited that in Photoshop or any other you know uh, edit photo editing program you're probably using Photoshop if you're using Lightroom and then if we had another copy or another black and white or another edit that we wanted to do we can add that as an option to uh, you know back inside of Lightroom but all these for the main point is is that all these photos are still inside of Lightroom they're in that Lightroom catalog and they're actually in the original file okay so there here's my PSD file right here this is where that picture lives right next to the NEF file right in my archive and that's probably where you want to keep it um, if you had a lot of PSD files you might take this folder right here and create um, you know the date and Hoover Dam and PSD if you had a lot of them the only problem with that is though is you can't use the stacking features in between two different folders in Lightroom you can only do it inside of a single folder you can't do it within collections I don't believe and I know you can't do it inside of the quick collection so I'm pretty sure it's only in that single folder alright um, so we're ready to go the files all done completely edited now anytime we need a copy of this picture we just go up and we use one of our normal export shortcuts alright so I'm gonna export this use one of my watermarks and there we go and we're just gonna call this Hoover Dam did I spell that right? I don't know show and explore okay good bam it's now exported there's the picture completely exported uh, that's weird when I flip it from one, ah, there it is and that's better okay there it is completely edited final JPEG ready for me to upload to the web and anytime I need to go back and I need another one of those copies again I come back into Lightroom and I export from that PSD file and as I've said a number of times there's really no need at least the way I work to save those JPEGs when I take those JPEGs I either upload them to the web or to Flickr or to, to somewhere to my website wherever it is I delete that file, that JPEG file when I'm done with it. I clean out that that folder that I have, that automatic export folder. Like when you go into here, you see F Temp Lightroom Export. That's a temporary folder for me. I delete all that stuff usually on a monthly basis because I don't need it anymore. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to archive all those JPEGs. There's really no reason for it. Pretty sure I talk about that in my ebook if you haven't already gotten it. So anyway that's what I do with them and then upload or send it out to Miller's lab to be printed or MPix or whoever it is that you use and uh, then delete that file then come back here into Lightroom into your catalog and export it again if you needed it now if it's a file you use all the time you might then keep the that set of JPEGs but other than that you know the algorithms are constantly getting better especially as far as Adobe is concerned so you're much better off coming back and exporting from the original you're probably in you know another year when maybe Lightroom 4 is going to come out or three years when Lightroom 5 is out you're going to end up with a much better picture down the road so try that out all right questions comments concerns like it don't like it let's hear it Greg Cazillo Cazillo.com thanks guys see ya